there's a big debate going on in the capitals of the world's power brokers. How to move beyond measuring a country's prospects for growth and development in purely economic terms, measuring what will help boost our ability to promote more wealth, health and perhaps happiness. It's called going beyond GDP, gross domestic product. It's a buzzword at international forums where the world's top policymakers have begun to wrestle with the challenge of measuring the quality of life. Joseph Stiglitz thinks that by focusing on the wrong things, politicians take the wrong decisions. So what does this mean to ordinary people in developing countries like the Republic of Moldova or here in the Republic of Tajikistan? How can education and training play a part in going beyond GDP? Mahabo Jabarova, chair of Tajikistan's Parliamentary Committee for Science, Education, Culture and Youth Policy, knows just how important the Beyond GDP debate really is. Развитие человеческого капитала сегодня для Таджикистана, для нашей страны является очень важным вопросом. И это не секрет, что будущее страны зависит от того, насколько образованы специалисты, насколько образованы кадры. И главный вопрос – это, естественно, повышение качества образования. И я думаю, что это вопрос времени. Если вот благодаря вашему проекту и всему тому, что делается правительством, я думаю, что эти вопросы будут подняты, будут решены. The European Training Foundation is the EU agency that promotes education and training reform in EU partner countries. It is at the forefront of thinking on how new and different policy-making tools can be used to help deliver the education and training that can help people acquire the skills to have better working lives. Two recent studies, here in Tajikistan and in the Republic of Moldova, look at how a more equitable education and training system can contribute to a country's development. The ETF study focused on three dimensions, access, quality and choices. What does that mean in practice? In Tajikistan, access to educational services is a big issue, particularly for those who live in rural areas, far from towns and cities. Rural areas, in comparison with the urban areas, are penalized in all the three dimensions of equity access, quality and choice. Access in general is less problematic, but lack of good quality and lack of choices are striking. These young women are satisfied with their education, but for those who are not, the education they receive now can have an impact on their educational opportunities lifelong. I want to say that I want من با دانشگاه تیبی داخل شوام و تحصیل رو در آنجا دوام دیدم. Было сказано, если таджикская такая притча, что если девочка образована, она выходит замуж, то она уже создает очень хорошую образованную семью. И вот с этой точки зрения, конечно, гендерная проблема в образовании играет очень важную роль. Although the Republic of Moldova is a very different country to Tajikistan, with levels of economic activity closer to those of Europe than Central Asia, access to education and training is just as big an issue here. The most striking finding of our study here is the huge gulf in opportunities between urban and rural populations. Moldova, like Tajikistan, is a rural economy with low economic standards. The equipment that's being used is outdated in Europe. Nonetheless, it's an important economy to Europe. And together, Europe and Moldova is preparing an association agreement which will include initiatives on economic diversification, stability and economic and educational exchanges. Both countries also experience higher levels of migration and rural areas in particular are becoming depopulated with serious consequences for the local educational institutions. The 
noi muncitori calificați suntem tare, dar aceștia băieții calificați care asta se duc după hotare, după aia asta, că după leafă mai bună. La noi, în agricultură, e puțin. Mai performam, mai asta, dar noi suntem cu, cu, cu acele vechituri de la Sovietski Soyuz. Migration, of course, also has a positive impact on the economy. Migrants send home significant amounts of funds, and some of that money goes to local education and training initiatives. There is less motivation for teachers to work in villages, but many schools do what they can to provide students with the best opportunities. Despite this, they still have trouble recruiting enough young staff and keeping them. What do employers think? Can improving access to choice and quality of education promote greater equity in the job market? Can that provide employers with the workforce they need to help their businesses thrive? What incentives are there for employers to invest in human capital development? First of all, I would like to say that we believe that the human capital is the main asset of the company. That's why we are making a lot of efforts in order to get the best people in our company, to develop them, to make them happy, to help them develop their career. And of course, we are interested in cooperation with the universities. We do have some agreements with several universities in Moldova. And we are working in different directions. First of all, uh, we are uh, stimulating the best students. We are giving scholarships for the best students. We have to get involved in, uh, in the curriculum development. We have to help the university to develop some new courses, some new special courses, to make the students closer to the real life situation, to the business where they are going to work in. I believe the situation is improving year by year, and we are finding more people uh, who are ambitious, intelligent, and willing to develop. And there are a lot of graduates who are coming from abroad. And this is really very inspiring. People are coming back to Moldova to, to make a change here in Moldova. Veronika Vragaleva is a senior tax inspector in a tax office in Kisinau. A graduate of the city's Academy of Economic Studies, she also has a master's degree in economics and law. She knows just how important improved access choice and quality are to improved employment prospects. I think it is very important to improve these uh, three components. At first, uh, the access. Uh, everybody have to have this access. And uh, we, in, in the Republic of Moldova, we have a little uh, problem with the access from rural zone. Uh, the first time I was very lucky to born here in Kishinev because uh, I tried to develop all the opportunities which uh, Kishinev give to young people. From my graduation to now, I finished uh, two master degrees, one in economics and one in law. Studierea pe tot parcursul vieții este foarte importantă pentru dezvoltarea economică a Republicii Moldova, deoarece persoanele studiind își pot aplica cunoștințele și pot avea o bună legătură cu piața muncii. Atunci când piața muncii este în continuă schimbare, forța de muncă poate fi adaptată mai ușor la cerințele pieții muncii. Dushan Bay may be a long way from Kisinau, but many of the challenges are the same. Local stakeholders like Umeda Soyev, head of Dushan Bay Education, Employment and Immigration Research Organization SOC Service, know how important it is to promote that quality, choice and access. Как и в Таджикистане, то же самое образование является одним из ключевых факторов для того, чтобы общество развивалось. На сегодняшний день в Таджикистане очень Большая рождаемость, то есть большой поток трудовых ресурсов, которые выезжают за пределы страны. Естественно, большая часть этого населения, выезжающих, не имеет 
достаточно образования для того, чтобы могли себя применить как здесь в стране и также за рубежом. Officials in Dushan Bay know that despite the challenges they face, quality education for all is the key to creating a wealthier, healthier, more stable and self-sustaining society. I can say that in comparison with five years, for example, we have increased the level of financing in a hundred times. In any other sphere, it is not possible. In Tajikistan and the Republic of Moldova, they understand which way the wind is blowing. Education, business, community leaders all have realized that equity and human capital are an essential alliance without which sustainable development in the long term is just not possible. They understand that by using new values to measure the progress of countries, we can see how a narrow economic approach looking only at GDP does not always help us come up with policies to encourage better productivity better employment conditions and a better life. Change is never easy. But if we make small changes to the way we measure a country's human capital development, meaningful improvements can be made in the lives of ordinary people. And that can contribute to the big paradigm shift that's currently being debated by the world's top policy thinkers.